108 degrees right there. We just got the brand new M3 MacBook Pro that starts at $1,600. And today we are gonna answer some very important questions. First off, we are gonna take off the back cover and see if this machine still has the issues that we had previously with the SSDs. And with that, Apple made a weird decision. They only put in a single fan into this 14 inch where all of the previous ones had dual fans. So we are gonna see if this thing can actually keep up with the performance of the M3 that uses more power with that single fan and how much better it is compared to the machine that it is replacing. Now, thankfully, this new machine has an HDMI port and a SD card slot compared to this one, which is nice. But unlike the previous 14 inch MacBooks, we don't have three Thunderbolt ports. We only have two and it can only support one external display. Now with that, my biggest concern is the M2 MacBook Pro hit 104 degrees Celsius. It got super hot with that single fan. So will the new 14 inch get super hot as well? We will be testing that. All right, the screws are out. Let's go ahead and pop up this cover here. Moment of truth. Let's pull this back and Bam, look at that. That looks more simple than before. But Eam, is it just me or does this fan look smaller than the ones in the 14 inch? I don't know, man. I guess we'll have to see. Yeah, it, to me, this thing looks kind of tiny. Now we have a single heatsink going to the M3 chip and we have a lot of empty space right around here. It's a different motherboard setup. And then right here in the top corner, we have two NAND chips. Woo! Now, Finally. that is a great thing because Apple showed up on stage with two, but we don't know. That could be the one terabyte model or the two terabyte. And with the M2 MacBook Pros and Airs, they only put one in and that gave us really slow speeds and that mattered not only for benchmarks but also transfers it would slow down incredibly compared to the m1 and then for multitasking we would have major slowdown so i'm glad that they fixed that now looking at the bottom here we have some pretty big speakers and we will compare it to the 14 inch hopefully the speakers are just as good as before and you know what these chips look smaller than the ones in the previous macbook so let's go ahead and let's pop these up and compare them so I took off all the screws from these covers and now let's pop this one open and compare it to that model that it is replacing. And right away, we can see that yes, the new SSD storage NANDs are much smaller than the previous ones that Apple has been using for years. I mean, they are tiny and we will test out the performance. Now with that, looking at the fans, yes, this thing does look smaller than the single fan with um, the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, as far as actual fan and performance, this could still do better. We'll see the RPMs, maybe it spins up really high. Uh, but I also noticed that the speakers over here they are fairly small. They're probably similar to the other 14 inch compared to these massive enclosures that we have on the 13 inch. And this thing looks a little bit sparse, the new $1,600 spec. We have so much empty space compared to jam packed here with the 13 inch model. Now I'm also noticing some differences in the heatsink setup with the new 14 inch M3. The bar is shorter compared to the 13 inch where it comes way far out. But with that, the actual bar itself is thinner, not as wide on the new $1,600 14 inch than we had with the 13 inch model. So I wonder how that is going to affect it. Now we also know that the M3 chip has 25% more transistors, 25 billion, but the actual thermal block size by itself is identical. And now let's remove the 13 inch that's being replaced and compare it to the previous 14 inch. And look at that guys. My goodness, there is a lot going on right here. First off, we see that we have dual fans compared to a single one. It's way more packed in. Once again, we have the much smaller new storage chips compared to the larger ones. And if you guys look 
On the higher end Pro 14 inch, we have extra NAND slots right here. Apple, of course, cut that back with all the M2 series, but if you were to upgrade to higher storage, you would get faster speeds. Whereas with the M3 version, I don't see any other slots. So even if you upgrade to two terabytes, you are not gonna get more performance. Now, looking at the speakers, they look identical, and that is a great thing. Thing, but Apple has been known to make some adjustments in software if they want to differentiate their lineup. So we will be testing that. Make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications enabled because we're going to make a ton of great comparison videos. Now, if you look at the Pro Chips um, thermal block, it is massive compared to the one on the M3. And we have the dual heat pipes coming out to the dual fans that can dissipate so much more heat. And that is why I loved the 14 inch at that $2,000 price point, it was quiet, silent pretty much, and it stayed super cool. Now as a positive, the fan looks pretty much identical to the one on the Pro laptops, but I am still worried about this M3 chip because it is using more power for more performance with a single fan, and it would have been easier for Apple to keep a dual fan layout instead of going with a single one than trying to you know change it up so with that said let's go ahead and set this thing up and we are going to be doing some tests but first i want to show you guys the helm case for macbooks from our sponsor andar which is the most luxurious case i've ever seen made from a hundred percent full grain leather that easily clips onto the top and bottom of your macbook for 360 degree protection so you don't end up with a bunch of scratches like we did on this one and it even comes with cutouts for all of the ports speaker grills and air events. You can get it in up to nine different colors for every MacBook design since 2016 with a 90 day return policy. So check it out using the link below with the code MaxTech for a 15% site-wide discount. All right guys, we are up and running and I'm gonna start with a Blackmagic disk speed test. Let's go ahead and run this. And right at the gate, we have 3,374 for the right and a little bit disappointing 2928 for the read speed with that said let's pull out the 13 inch macbook pro and it looks like on this one we have 2449 for the right and 2835 so the read speeds are very close but for the right we are getting about seven eight hundred megabyte per second more which is good now the thing is if you have the M2 with 256 gig and the single NAND, that one was so slow, about 1400. And it's only if you upgrade to 512 with dual NANDs that you get this kind of performance. And now let's open up TG Fan Pro. And I'm curious about that single fan. Dang, look at that crazy fan, 6,800 RPM. I haven't seen that in a while and it goes down to 2300. Right now it's off, just chilling, which is great. Let's take a look at the M2 Pro with the dual fans. Here we have 5,779 for the left side and 6,200 for the right side. Definitely not as fast as the one in the M3. So they're using probably the same fan, just kicking up more. And on the previous 13 inch, oh man, this thing is 7,200 RPM. That thing is a little screamer compared to this. Now I just enabled max fan speed on this 13 inch. We're gonna see how annoying it sounds compared to the new one. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it definitely has a high pitch whine and it's coming from that right hand side. And now for the M3 14 inch, I don't know how much you guys can hear that with our studio shotgun mic, but this thing definitely has less of a high pitch sound. It does sound like it's moving more air and might be slightly louder, but definitely less annoying. And I just maxed out the 14 inch with a pro chip. And even though this thing has two fans, it is actually quieter than the new M3 with a single fan. And the fans are actually set up differently to kind of offset the noise. And to be fair, with this MacBook, it never hit maximum fan speed anyways because it had dual fans. And now let's get into our thermal testing. I have the latest version of Cinebench opened up right here. I also have TG Fan Pro and we just got the update to be able to see the temperatures. And with that, we have MX Power Gadget to see what the frequencies are gonna run 
try now. This is gonna be super interesting. So let's go ahead and run our CPU 10 minute stress test. Now, right away, I am seeing 3.64 gigahertz for the performance cores with everything maxed out. Now that is crazy because with the M2, it ran at 3.5 peak, but only 3.2 if you're actually pushing it. So this has a smaller dip. And even though we have the same amount of performance cores with the M3, they are running quite a bit faster. And as far as temperatures, we are at 98 degrees Celsius right now. It has literally only been on under 30 seconds. Now we have 101. The fans kicked up right away, which is great. Dang, we we have 105 right there for a second. So it's definitely getting hot. The M2 13 inch, the highest ever reach was 104. 106 now, 108 degrees right there. No um, yeah, this thing is definitely running hotter. The fans are spinning up earlier, 107, 108. That never happened with the 13 inch. So yes, this thing does put out more heat. We are running at, I saw 20, 21 watts. Um, for the CPU, that is right in line with the M2, and that is a little bit surprising, but now we're seeing that it's dropping down a little. Look at this, guys, our fans just keep ramping up. I absolutely hear them right now. They're almost maxed out, and this proves that yes, this machine is thermal throttling just a bit, because 108 is the highest that you can reach before it slows down, and we see that in this line that the frequency was dropping down because it got too hot, so if Apple did keep two fans in here like the other 14 inches, that would have helped out. But now we are cooling down. We're at 99, 98, still hot. So when the fan's running loud, it does help. But keep in mind, this is only a CPU test. We're not testing the graphics. So if you're running both, like in a lot of real world applications like Lightroom, which we're gonna test in tomorrow's video, this might get a little crazy. And now I pulled out my thermal camera, so let's see what we get. It's been about five minutes, and I'm seeing 35, 34 degrees Celsius right there. And actually, the chip itself um, doesn't look crazy hot. We're getting way more heat out of that exhaust. Um, so the, it is dissipating heat fairly well with the CPU workload. Um, so I'm actually surprised by that. It means that we're not gonna get chassis throttling in this machine because it's getting that heat out of there, even though we're seeing a little bit of throttling. And what this really means is if you're waiting for an M3 MacBook Air that is fanless, that is gonna have a lot of heat buildup, more throttling than before, and Apple might even choose to just down clock or limit that chip in that chassis because of this. So if you care about performance, then you should probably just buy one of these instead of waiting for that machine. All right, guys, we are almost done here, and one interesting thing is this processor is rated at 4.0 gigahertz. We never saw higher than 3.6, Four. So let's get this score and then we'll see what we can actually get. But one thing's for sure, this machine definitely runs louder than the other 14 inch uh, pros that we have tested. All right, the test is done and we have 638 points. Now, if that seems low, this is the updated much harder Cinebench. And looking over here, it gets closer to the M1 Max with this M3, that is impressive. That in tomorrow's video, we'll compare it to the M2 Pro, which technically should be faster, but we shall see. And I'm gonna go ahead and just run that single core test super quick. And right there, 3.7, 3.71, we got higher than with the multi-core, but it is not hitting four gigahertz. And that means that that four gigahertz is only for very simple, quick single core tasks, more like for a Geekbench benchmark. It's not actually running there, even though it is cool. So what did we learn in this test? We have a lot of internal differences. Uh, we have those SSDs that are updated and new. And yes, the single fan is loud, and this machine can throttle unlike the previous 14 inch with the Pro chips. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button above. Check out that cool laptop case, Anders with the link down below, and we shall see you guys in the next video.